welcome back to Clock Talk. We are in a weird part of the house today, but we're gonna have to deal with it because it's the only spot of the house that has light at the moment. I noticed a few comments on some videos that were people asking how I know the things that I know, who I am, where I come from, and really why you should even trust me. And I figure I might as well answer a bunch of those questions because you have no reason to trust me or listen to anything I have to say or even give me the time of day if you have no idea who I am or where I come from. So I'm going to be answering a variety of questions that you guys sent me over on Instagram and trying to nail through as many of those as I can as possible. Now I have somebody else here with me today. Hop on up. Good girl. Because most of the questions that you guys were asking me were actually related to Yoshi and have a lot to do with my history with dog training and things like that. So we're starting off the video today with little Yoshi here in my lap and then we will do a switcheroo, we'll put Yoshi away and we'll bring up the birds to answer those half the questions. So the first question I'm going to answer here is what do you do for income? I am a dog trainer, that's what I do for income, that is my job. At the present moment I have not completed my certification, I mainly just teach puppy classes and kind of doing the basics, really simple commands and things like that. Uh, I am supposed to be getting sent away to complete my certification, but obviously with the state of the world right now, flying back over to BC to complete that training is not going to be happening. So I'm kind of on hold for a little bit until I can do that, and then I'm going to go through, finish my training, and then I'm going to go through and do independent certifications. What are the different animals that you've trained and how did you learn? So I actually went to school for applied behavioral analysis. I was not able to complete the schooling due to complications in my personal life. I kind of had to leave all that behind. Um, but that is mainly where I started learning things and where I get a lot of my history from and understanding behavior and psychology. Otherwise, a lot of my experience comes from the fact that every job I've ever had has been related to pet work one way or the other. I have worked in three different pet store chains from anything from bird specialty shops to hand raising birds to working in stores that actually don't have any animals at all but focus a lot more on the nutrition side of things and giving proper education on the elements of pet food. Then my more recent job which is all about animal training and that side of, of the work with animals. How many different animals have I trained? Species wise, not that many. Realistically I've only trained birds, dogs, and cats. That being said, I have trained everything from macaws and cockatoos to conures to budgies and I have worked with a large variety of dogs. Since I do run puppy classes, I've obviously worked with a large variety of dogs from anything from chihuahuas up to your German Shepherds and your Burmese Mountain Dogs. There's a large variety of things that I've worked with in there. Cat-wise, I've only really worked with the one cat that I live with. I've worked with a bunch of other ones that have come and go through adoptions, um, but I haven't sat there and liberally trick trained a thousand one things for a cat, but basic problem solving and behavioral things I've worked through with a large variety of cats. What do you do for fun? So as terrible as this is about to sound, I train my animals. That's what I find most enjoyable, that's why I'm focusing my career around it. Working with my animals and doing all those sorts of things with them is what I find fun, so that's what I tend to do in my spare time. Are you in a relationship and with who? I am presently, I am engaged at the moment to a woman named Jackie. Generally refer to her as Jack or Jack Jack just because that's what she prefers to be called and so that's what we're gonna call her. And there's a picture, there she is. Woo! Do you do training consultations and what are your favorite animals to work with? I do not do training consultations at this point in time. I could technically do it if I really wanted to, but I would rather go through and get my proper certifications and have a bit more experience personally before I would feel comfortable offering consultations knowing that I'd be giving everybody the proper advice that they would need. I just would rather have a bit more education behind myself and have proper assessments done to ensure that I know what I'm doing before I would completely put someone else's trust in me. My favorite animal to work with and train is probably specifically Yoshi. There isn't one species I would say I prefer working with over others, but training Yoshi in particular is extremely rewarding for me because she is a reactive dog. Yoshi has come an extremely long way with her reactivity and she really isn't bothered by most things anymore, but through that training there's just kind of a special uniqueness to it in that you have to pay so much more attention to your animal's body language and their emotional state and really how they're feeling when you're walking with them and doing very basic things with them. And I find that having to be that in tune with their emotions and being able to understand how to respond to them and how to help them feel safe and comfortable where they don't have to be reactive, when you have to work that way and focus so much on their emotional state, there's just this special sort of connection that happens there and I find you end up just a lot closer with the animal because you're spending so much time focusing on how they're feeling and how they're going to respond to things 
that you end up just that little extra level of being in tune with, with them and how they're feeling and how they go about their daily lives. So for me, working with her and watching her grow and be so much less scared of the world and becoming less and less reactive as our training progresses is something that's so, so rewarding just from the principle of the relationship that forms through that training as well as seeing her grow and develop. That's probably one of my favorite things is seeing her go from being so scared and so reactive to being so much more sociable and so much more happy. Where did you learn to train dogs and birds so well and what's your favorite trick, dog or bird? As I already said, I did go to school for applied behavioral analysis and then on top of that I currently work as a dog trainer where I've had to work under other trainers and shadow them and learn from them as well as go to school, read a whack load of books and pass proper knowledge assessment tests. As I've said, I haven't taken my knowledge assessment test because I can't travel to where I need to travel to to be able to take those exams and finish my training at this point in time, but we will get there when the world opens back up. My favorite trick for Yoshi is probably rebounding. It's just a really fun one. That and leg weaving is really, really fun. Any sort of tricks that I do with Yoshi, I really love the ones that are very interactive and the behavior works around myself as well. So like with weaving, we both have to be in sync. We both have to be moving at the right pace. And with rebounding, we have just have that really clear communication. I really love those sort of interactive tricks that are less me just telling her to do something and rather us working together to accomplish a goal. With my birds, it's probably high five. That's a really fun one that looks really complicated but isn't super challenging. What's your age and what's your current job? My current job is dog training and my age is 23. It'll be 24 on August 22nd. Do you think a 13 year old girl can train a lovebird as good as you do? Do you have a routine? Yes, I think a 13 year old can train a bird just as well as I can. I think a 60 year old, a 30 year old, a 10 year old can train an animal just as well as anybody else. Animal training isn't something that's dictated by age and as long as you're willing to put in the work and the effort and learn, you can definitely train an animal just as well as I have. There's nothing special about me that makes me more capable of doing something than anybody else. Routine is definitely extremely important, especially when it comes to learning a new skill. If the birds or any animal I have is learning something new, I try to make sure I'm doing at least two sessions a day, revamping that skill, going over it, encouraging them to learn. If I'm not teaching anything new, I'll usually just have one session a day or I might have one every other day just to kind of keep the things that they do know already fresh and in their brain. But yeah, usually if you're teaching something new, I am for two times a day, once in the morning, once in the evening, and if I'm not teaching anything and I just want to keep their memory fresh, it'll be once every couple days that I just go over everything and make sure it's still there. So this one. <laughs> this, this comment I've seen in the YouTube comments section and I replied to it there, but I'm going to address it here to make it extremely, extremely clear. I do not have an eating disorder. Yes, I am very skinny, I'm very bony, all the veins pop out in my hands. That's just the way my body's built. I just have a really fast metabolism. It doesn't matter how much food I eat or what I eat or how much sugar I cram into my body, it will not stick. I don't know what it is about me that makes it that way, but I've always been extremely skinny. Even when I was volunteering at the vet clinics, I was constantly being told to go seek help because they thought that I was struggling to eat and not taking care of myself properly. I do eat a lot and my significant makes sure that I eat a whack load because she's Italian. Hi. Hello. Not a question, but I wanted to say thank you for helping give me the courage to come out. That's super awesome. I really hope that everything's going great for you since coming out and I'm glad that I gave you the courage to do so. How did you get into positive reinforcement? Any tips for a newbie to maybe read or something? So for sure, I will leave a list down in the description of a couple books and things that are really good to read if you're wanting to get into modern behavioral science. Um, how I learned, I already kind of explained. I did go to school for applied behavioral analysis, even though I was not able to finish my degree. And then I went through several different companies that helped me learn more about a variety of animals, get experience handling them, learning about their care. And now I work as a dog trainer where I have shadowed other trainers and will be getting sent away for proper training to be able to do my job more effectively and get properly certified. That's how I know everything that I know. Outside of that, there is a lot of independent research that goes on to it and any good trainer will always continue their research and follow through with more studies as more modern things get established. So I will definitely leave a couple links down in the description below. It is by no means a complete list. It'll just be like a quick little starter thing for if you want to get a little bit more into behavioral science and that's something that you're interested in. We gotta do a swap. Okay, you gotta go away, we gotta get the birds. Hey, bud. Oh, Gary. Hey, sweetheart. Should parrots 
have vets. Yes, every animal needs vet care in order for them to be taken care of properly. They need to be getting regular exams to make sure that they are healthy and not hiding any illnesses. How long did it take you to get your birds to eat veggies? So Mia was my most difficult one. Newt took to vegetables extremely quickly. Mia had liver disease when I first got her and hadn't been fed a vegetable in her entire life. So getting her to eat things was very difficult. It took me close to a year. Did you ever feel like a new bird would never come around to liking you? No, not really. Like there's definitely been challenges, especially when it came to Newt. He's probably been the biggest challenge, but I wouldn't really say that there's ever been a time when I thought an animal wouldn't grow to like me. For me, that's not really what training is, is about. It, training is for the benefit of the animal. For me, training and teaching them things is more about them and the benefits that they're gonna have than it is about whether or not they're gonna like me. So that's never really been a concern for me personally. What's one of the biggest challenges you've faced in training? So my biggest challenge was probably Newt. The way he was raised prior was that being aggressive and trying to bite and lunge at fingers was hilarious because people would pull their hands away, they'd make lots of loud noise when it happened. So Newt learned that being aggressive towards people was really fun and reinforcing. And because of that, it's also kind of changed his brain a little bit where now if he gets overexcited, it's extremely easy for him to flip to being aggressive. And he gets overexcited extremely easily. So when it comes to training and working with Newt, it's a constant game of kind of learning where his threshold is, if he's going to be a little overstimulated, if I need to be reinforcing differently, so that way he's not going to get overstimulated and feel the need to get aggressive. Um, so that's probably been one of the biggest challenges was learning how to read him and make sure that his boundaries were always well below his threshold. Was Newt or Mia harder to tame? Again, probably Newt just because we had to undo a lot of things that were taught. Mia, it was just a matter of building that trust and teaching her that people were a safe place to be. Newt was, I have to now undo a year's worth of training that's been ingrained in your system and have you learn that interacting with me doesn't mean you need to be aggressive. And unteaching a behavior is always a thousand times more difficult than just teaching the correct one in the first place. How many birds do you have and what are their names? So I only have these two right now. Uh, this one's Newt, he's a maroon-bellied conure, and this one is Mia, she's a blue mutation Pacific parrotlet. Can any of your birds free fly? By the way, love your vids. I'm glad you're enjoying the videos. No, none of my birds can do free flight, and I do not plan on ever teaching it to them at this point in time. Free flight is something that's not to be taken lightly, and not every animal is suitable for it. Because birds are a prey species, their capacity to get scared and fly miles and miles away is extremely strong. So when it comes to selecting a bird that's going to be suitable for a free flight environment, there's a lot that has to go into it. There's not only a lot of training just on teaching them how to respond if they do get scared and teaching them not to be scared and teaching them to have strong muscles so that they control against winds, but the fact that not every bird is suitable to be let outside and fly that way. And that's something that is extremely difficult to tell if you don't have enough experience with it. And since I haven't personally trained free flight behaviors and I haven't been under a trainer who has done those things, I do not anticipate my, any desire to want to do those things because I don't feel educated enough to teach my birds how to do it. And I don't feel educated enough to do it knowing that I would be doing it completely safely and that they wouldn't get lost or get hurt in the process. There's a lot of videos online that will try and teach you how to let your birds free fly. There's a lot of people who will charge you a pretty penny to try and tell you that they can teach you over the phone how to do it. Um, don't listen to them. Please don't do it. It is extremely dangerous and unless someone is there with you in your house setting up a program for your bird and going to walk you through every step of the way and properly analyze your bird and be able to tell you whether or not they are suitable for that kind of training, you cannot do it safely anyways. If you wanted to get another bird, what breed would you get? So I guess the species I would get would probably be the Eclectus. That's definitely my dream bird. They're so weird. They're so aloof. They've got such strange personalities and such unique vocalizations. They're very interesting birds. I do very much think it's a pipe dream though. I don't think I would ever get an Eclectus. So this person sent me a whack load of questions, so we're just gonna rocket fire through them. Who is your first bird? Flippy the Canary. Are you single, taken, or not bothered? Well, I would consider myself not bothered, but I am engaged. What's your favorite plant and flower? I'm gonna be really basic and say the rose just because it's nice, but those plants that I don't know the name of, but they've got just like leaves and when you touch them, they fold up because they get really offended by you touching them. 
Those plants are rad. Love them. How'd you pick the names for your pets? Most of them came with names already. Yoshi's full name is Yoshibel. That was named prior. Fawns was already named Fawns. Mia was just named Mia because it was one of those things where you can't really think of a name and then one day you're like, hey, Mia suits you. I'm gonna start calling you Mia. Newt was named Newt because we were thinking about adopting a Senegal that was named Newt, but he was all the way over in Ontario and I was living in BC at the time, so it wasn't a feasible adoption. And when we ended up getting Newt, they didn't really tell us his name, so we decided to call him Newt. Do your fish have names? Yes, they do. The Plucko is named Mr. Plucko, and the six loaches are all named after the Incredibles characters. You have Frozone, Edna, Violet, Elastigirl, Dash, and Mr. Incredible. Do you have a P.O. Box? If not, could you make one? I don't have any plans for a P.O. Box. I don't have one right now, and I don't think I'm gonna make one. I don't have a need for things. There's no reason for people to send me things. That was really rude, sir. So I, I just don't expect that I'm gonna be making one. What's your aesthetic? Mm, clean, tidy, simple, organized. What type of music do you vibe to? I'm usually listening to some form of rock one way or the other. Favorite book? Anything behavior related. Don't Shoot the Dog is a really good basic one, but The Ethical Dog Trainer and Accelerated Learning are also pretty cool books to read. How did you first get into having birds? So my first bird was Flippy. He was a canary I got when I was still in elementary school. And he was one of those cases where it was you bringing your parent nonstop for months on end, wanting a pet, you can't have any pets. And then one day they're like, hey, I think you're old enough to have a pet. So I saved up all my money and I was allowed to get a canary. So I went and I got Flippy, brought him home, and there you go. What's your favorite pellet for birds? My favorite pellet is the Totally Organics pellets and Kytec Oven Fresh Bites. I love their ingredients. I love that there isn't a lot of filler. I have heard mixed things about Totally Organics not being totally nutritionally complete, and that's part of the reason why I feed two different brands because we really at this point in time don't really know what all the nutritional needs of a parrot are since we're still learning and figuring that out. So by feeding multiple brands, I'm kind of guaranteeing that there's a large variety in the nutrition there, and if something's lacking in one pellet, it'll be higher in another. I also feed two just in case one ever gets recalled or the birds go off of it for whatever reason. Makes it nice and easy to know that there's a backup food that they can eat until the other brand is up and running again. Hi, I'm a YouTube subscriber and I want to know the name of that little bluish bird. The little bluish bird down here is Mia and she is a blue mutation Pacific Parrotlet. Do you see yourself having parrots for the rest of your life? Well, considering that Mia lives for 25 years and Newt lives for 30, I'm gonna go with, yeah, I'm gonna have birds for a very long time. I don't have any plans to add more birds into my life though. And if I did, it would probably be more senior ones that I know aren't going to outlive me because I just don't think that's really fair to get an animal that's going to have to be rehomed regardless of how well you take care of them purely because they outlive you. How do you balance enriching your birds and personal life? A lot of it's just scheduling. I'm a very organized person and I'm very precise with my timing. I don't like being late for things. I'm very particular with the way things have to be done and how much time it's gonna take. So when it comes to providing enrichment for all of my animals and my birds and myself, it becomes a matter of just very, very critical scheduling. What makes parrotlets stand out to you? Why do you like them? I guess it's just cause they're so sassy. Parrotlets are a really awesome bird to demonstrate why you can't push smaller animals around. The same reason that a lot of chihuahuas end up really aggressive because people just think they can pick them up and ignore their basic body language and respect. So parrotlets are kind of like the chihuahuas of the bird world in that they're very, very small and they get pushed around a lot. And when you push them around and they realize you aren't gonna listen to them, they'll bite you, they'll attack you, they'll get super aggressive. And I love that about them because it's a prime example of why you, you need to give them some basic respect. When did you first get an interest for birds? So my first bird was Flippy, I got him when I was in elementary school, and then past that Mia was my next bird, which I got in the very beginning of high school, I believe. Mia was probably when most of my interest for birds came around because I got Mia purely because she was in poor health and I knew that if she didn't get to a home that was going to do the research necessary to get her the help that she needed, she was probably not gonna live much longer. So Mia would definitely be when more of my research for birds started and when more of my engagement in behavior and enrichment and things like that all kind of sparked and spewed about because I had to do so much reading and I had to do so much preparation to try and figure out what was gonna work for her, how to get her healthy again. And that's probably when kind of everything sparked and I realized I really wanted to keep doing this the rest of my life and here we are. Are you a tea or a coffee person? I don't know if you can see it behind me here, but there is a white cup 
that keeps itself maintained at a heated temperature and there is a kettle and then off frame up here there's a little sugar jar and a holder for discarded tea bags. Which parrot do you prefer? So my favorite species is probably the palm cockatoo because when they want to attract a mate and they're trying to woo them, they don't do a fancy dance. They go and they find a hollow out log and they find a really good stick and they spend a really long time finding the perfect stick or the perfect rock and they will fly around, pick out their log and they will grab the little stick in their foot and just bash the log and make a little, a little drum solo for them. And they're trying to demonstrate that the nest is solid and that they should come nest with them in their chosen hollow log, but I just think it's ridiculous and they've got the best wackiest head feathers. Those birds are awesome. Are you going to get more birds in the future? At this present point in time, I don't have any plans to get more birds. I just have too many animals in this house right now and I think adding another animal on top of that, with where I am at this point in time, wouldn't be fair to the animals I already have. I already have to divide my time between all of them and make sure that they're all getting proper training and enrichment. And I think adding another animal would potentially take away from their care. Maybe in the future I'll feel like I have more time and more stability to be able to do that. But I just wouldn't find it fair to take away the care and enrichment that the animals are already getting just to, for the sake of adding another one in. I just don't personally think it's the best decision right now. How long did it take you to learn your bird's body language? Body language is something that you're always kind of learning about one way or the other. Even when you feel like you know exactly what they're thinking, there's always things that you can learn upon. There's always ways that you can improve. So while I would say I have a pretty good understanding of my bird's body language, I'm always learning and double checking and making sure that I am actually understanding what they're trying to communicate. And that will do it for today's video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I tried to answer as many questions as I possibly could in one video. I apologize if I didn't get to yours. Um, it does occur to me that none of you asked me my name. Um, my name is Courtney, <laughs> um, if, if you were wondering. But yeah, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope that you learned everything you wanted to learn about me today. And if you've got more personal questions, feel free to leave them down below. I'm always in the comments section for the first eight hours or so after a video uploads. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Bye!